Welcome everybody, Level M Diecast, bringing you part two of our ultimate Jurassic Park slash world uh, review for 2022. Uh, we got a couple more five packs in this one, and then um, we'll take care of the exclusives, you know, the singles, the new stuff like that. Um, if you happen to come across this video before seeing part one, um, I will link that at the end of the video. You can go check that one out. Uh, this one right here, this is Ground Travelers. This is from the uh, Jurassic World Legacy Collection. So these ones do not uh, involve um, the new Dominion world. Uh, this is from previous uh, Jurassic World movies. So we'll go ahead and just crack this guy open. Definitely don't have as many to get to in this part as part one. Part one was the doozy. So pull these out. Kind of set this guy to the side. Uh, again, just, you know, talking about the uh, gyrosphere. Uh, you know, they're, they're all the same. They're, there's just no difference between these. Um, the only difference is, is there was one that had some battle damage at one point in time. But, um, you know, other than that, they're they're still the same old, same old. So nothing doing about the gyrospheres. This one, however, is very interesting. This is the, I believe this is the Fleetwood RV. Yep, this is the Fleetwood RV. So this originally came out in kind of a blackish kind of gray color. Um, and then there was a recolor done that was green, which is this color. However, that particular batch pretty much never hit the U.S. That was at the very end of the previous run of Jurassic uh, World and Park stuff that they did uh, several years ago. And uh, the green one just never hit the U.S. really. Um, a couple places may have got it, but for the most part, it, you know, it just it just never hit the U.S. So um, unfortunately, I won't be able to, uh, you know, compare this to that original one. But it is very nice to get this one now, uh, finally, after all these years. Uh, looks pretty decent. This casting is obviously, obviously had to made really, really small to fit in the blister. I mean, you're talking about a giant um, RV that had, you know, the trailer on the back as well. Um, if you remember previous Jurassic World movies. This one looks okay, though. I think for the scale, it looks pretty good. Um, it is nice and wide. You see the seats in there are pretty tiny, though. Just to kind of emphasize how big this thing is supposed to be. So that's actually pretty cool. So very nice to get that one here in the U.S. So we'll throw that guy over there. All right. They love to just reissue the Jeeps. This is Jeep number 12. Uh, this one is pretty cool. This is the 93 Wrangler. This is the same one that they've used for number 10 and number 18 and number 29. Um, they're all the same. This is the dirty version. Um, this one's really cool because it does have this nice canopy top piece, which does come off. There is the interior. This is the coolest thing ever. When this came out, this was just the absolute coolest thing ever. Um, I really was hoping that maybe we'd see this in premium someday and get that all decoed up. Um, but that still looks pretty good. Now, we have seen that before. So this is the previous one right here. This one dated uh, L43 or L48, I should say, right there on the base. This is the Dirty number 12. So just taking a look at here, you'll see that the the yellow tint for the topper is uh, much lighter on the um, new one versus the existing one. And then the, um, you know, prints on the bottom here, it's just quality of prints. Again, you know, there is differences in the brown. They're definitely different colors. A little bit more muddy on this one than this one. Um, they both still have that red bar across the top of the windshield. You see the colors between the two are significantly different. The one on the right, kind of a brownish kind of color. The one on the left is more tan. The tan one is the new one. So that is dated R27. So no differences on the base. Uh, taking a look at the deets on the side. The new one is on the bottom. Same old, same old. Definitely a lighter red print for the wheels. Uh, but other than that, that's that's it. Just a standard fare. So We'll put our new guy out there. We'll set our existing one to the side. Um, and then just for completion purposes, they did do a clean number 12. So this is what number 12 looks like. Nice and clean with no dirty muddy on it. And then taking a look at our base deets, that is L05. So it did debut clean before it went dirty. So that's pretty nice. We get another uh, dinosaur here. This is the one that spits the venom stuff on um, you know, that guy from Seinfeld. That's always how you're going to know him, the postman from Seinfeld. That's just the way it works. That guy actually did an interview not that long ago about how he's kind of stuck being that guy from Seinfeld, and I totally understand. This one is super 
Super cool. Super cool. This is a brand spanking new deco on this ML320. This is a specific casting that was made for Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Park stuff. We've never seen this casting outside that licensing. Um, if you saw the um, original Jurassic Park movies, this will be instantly recognizable. Um, this one is pretty cool. Now, you might be thinking, you might be thinking, hey, we've seen that one with that deco. You've actually seen the other version with a similar deco. So they do make a full canopy ML320 with, with the whole back section on there, which is this one on the top. Um, you'll see that it's, the decos aren't even remotely close. They are the same colors, um, but they are completely different designs. So that is very, very, very nice. I do like that a lot. This one right here, in particular, L05. But uh, we'll probably see that guy again here shortly. So very, very nice on this one. We also did see this casting once before in an army green uh, with some super green, super chrome foil print on there. Um, I did criticize this way back in the day about the you know chrome color on there. I just didn't think that it matched the whole Jurassic theme. Um, but you know it is what it is. This one dated L43. So that one is pretty cool. I do like the green camo, but I could tell you the uh, this kind of darker military camo is much, much better. So very, very nice seeing a brand spanking new deco on that. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer real quick. That last batch that I mentioned earlier, um, I'm not 100% sure what all came in that batch because it was very, very difficult to even get any information on it. So we may have seen one of these previously, but I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. All right, we're going to go on to our very last five-pack of the whole shebang. Uh, this is the Land uh, and Sea Squad. Land and Sea Squad. There we go. Uh, this one comes with the Triceratops, which is pretty cool. Other than that, I think this pack is going to be absolutely dismal uh, for a number of reasons. So we're going to get this open. Uh, so this little submersible here at the bottom... Um, they don't fit in jammer cases. They don't fit anywhere. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not quite sure where I put these. Um, but there are two previous versions. There was, of course, one exactly decoed up like this that they released. And then there was a Battle Damage, which had uh, some crack prints on the uh, dome cover here just to you know, indicate that it's been in a fight. Uh, but there are just two little attachments on here. They don't move. They don't do anything. This was a brand new casting made specifically for the Jurassic World, which is called a submarine. You'll see that it does say trademark Amblin Entertainment on the bottom. So it's an interesting thing. Um, there's not much to it. There are some couple seats in there, uh, some nice little print on the front, but that is absolutely it. So uh, we'll go ahead and leave that guy out here just just because. All right, Explorer number four. There are no prints on the, um, you know, behind the bush bar here. Uh, but we've seen number four before, of course. Um, we've seen it a couple of different times. As a matter of fact, um, we've seen it crushed. So this is going to be one of the singles in crushed. So number four, we did you know kind of go over in part one. Um, same old, same old here. But we do have crushed. Now, the cool thing about um, all of these, I guess, is that, I mean... I don't know. It, there, it's not really cool, to be honest with you. I This casting's been a dismal letdown. I, I really try to hype it up um, because it is by far the most iconic vehicle from Jurassic Park um, by far. But um, I just did, don't think Matchbox did a good job. Even in the collector line um, from the Mattel Creations box wasn't that great. Um, but it is what it is. So this is the crushed version. So this version right here is kind of the attacked by the T-Rex. It's been flipped over, crushed, and you know attacked and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, it does roll perfectly flat. The um, base is tooled that way. So although the whole Explorer itself is twisted and mangled up, um, it does roll perfectly flat. So very, very interesting. I do like the broken glass and stuff on here. It looks pretty cool. This is the muddy version of number four. Uh, we're going to go ahead and crack this guy open because this is also the muddy version of number four. So our original muddy version of the dr this destroyed Jurassic Park uh, one is this one. I'm taking to see if I can see a date code on there. So it doesn't seem like there's a date code. So this may be really, really, really old. This did come 
in a single pack. It's very interesting. There's no date code. Oh, there it is. It's right there. H, I'm sorry, M26. There we go. Sorry, didn't expect it to be printed. I thought that would be uh, stamped in there. This is our new one here, dated R34. Much easier to see that one. So new one on the top. Just looking at the deets on the side. It's always going to be quality of prints. You can see the striping and stuff on the side. It's a little bit different, especially around the hood area. Um, the print on the side is is a little bit different colors. It's I mean, it's all the same. You know, the same splatters there. It is definitely a different color for mud. But that's just what you're going to get for several years in between production runs. Um, you'll see that the one on the top is a little bit more green than the one at the bottom. A little bit more yellow. But again, it's it's just quality of prints. There's really nothing going on there. Um, I mean, it is what it is. I still think this is a, a better version of the Explorer. Um, I just don't think that uh, Matchbox did a very good job. I've never been a, a fan of this one at all. So put the new one in there. And then we'll take this guy right here and we'll put this guy out there as well. So a couple of Explorers out there. And yes, ah, if you guys saw number, you know, first video... Uh, this makes number, I think this is number five, five times um, they used Jeep number 18. Um, it's just ridiculous, uh, just ridiculous. You know, they could have used the blue Jeeps. Um, the blue Jeeps were pretty nice. They could have used those, but um, obviously those blue Jeeps were a little bit different, but same old, same old, so nothing fancy there, but we'll throw him down there. This is our nice Triceratops. That looks pretty good. Nice prints on there for the horns and the eyes are done up. Of course, they don't move. They don't, you know, there's no functionality to them. But they all have a little, like, spot there to hold the hold the feet down. So we'll put our Triceratops right there. There's our little family of dinosaurs. All right, this is our next ML. So this is the ML we just looked at previously, uh, which is this one here. So we just bring them back up. Uh, there are quite a few differences between uh, not only the colors but just the camo print itself um it's very very close but it's it's different enough um those two bars on the side those reinforcement bars uh significantly darker on the top than the bottom uh one on the top is our existing one again l05 the prints for the wheels and all that stuff are the same they do both have front print on there so that looks okay uh definitely a little bit more crisp on the old one the headlights were a little bit bigger on the old one versus the new one as well it looks like they may struggle with the new prints. And then from this side, you know, just same-o, same-o. The bases are a little bit different in color. You can see that this one had to have a date code wiped on it, which is kind of interesting. I've never seen that before. You can tell that date code was wiped. So R18 is the date on that one. So, And then, of course, they both have a tan window as well. So that's pretty cool. I was happy to get that ML. I think the ML is a pretty good one. All right, moving through just some other stragglers. We're off to just the singles. Yes, another number five. Explorer number five. Um, not a whole lot to, to do with these. There's just, it's the exact same deco. There's nothing doing. Uh, we've seen this number five a couple of times. So do have a couple number fives here. So this one here dated L05. This is the OG. L05 is the OG number five. Um, that one on the bottom is the original. Again, there's no difference between the two of these. Um, everything is... Oops, sorry about that. Uh, new one on the bottom now. Flipping them around. The prints are all the same. It's just... Ah, man, it's just a lot of the same-o, same-o. And then this was another L, um, number five. This is P51. So, again, just over and over and over. I wish we could have got a different wheel. Um, it would have been nice to get a different wheel. But, unfortunately... Not a different wheel, so we'll put that guy in the back. Set these other guys to the side. Get some space going on here. I do apologize. There's a lot of cars flying around everywhere. All right, now we're going to move on to more of these singles. Uh, this is the Jeep Wagoneer. This um, I don't know if this actually ties into Jurassic World, if it's in the actual movie or not, but this is the one that came from the main line. Dated L40. Highly unlikely there would be anything different here. But we're going to take a look. This is the new one here, dated R32. So we'll have that guy on the bottom. They are going to be the same, you know, wood grain print on there. It does say Grand Wagoneer on the front fender. 
um, you know, gas caps all painted up, stuff like that. They both have the same wheels. They are both a nice black metallic. So original one on the top. Uh, the original one on the top is, is definitely a lighter black metallic, uh, but it's not significant. They both have tow hitches, which is kind of cool. They both have the same interior, um, and then the deets are the same. So unfortunately, and of course, the bases are going to be the same. They're not going to be changed up or nothing like that. So that one I figured would be relatively quick. Unfortunately, I wish we would get more decals for that, although we are getting a brand new deco for that. Uh, in a five pack for 2023, which is right around the corner. All right, moving on to some G Wagon action. This is the one that came in the very first mix, the very first mix that I did a separate video for. So this is not covered in the first part or this part, um, but I do have a link for that in the first video. So this came in the very, 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 very first mix. And then, of course, they re released it in a subsequent mix, mix which is right here. So these are going to probably both have our date codes. Probably this one will be probably P right at the end of the year. Yep, P51. So at the very, very tail end of 2021, this one was produced. And then now this one, which is dated uh, R38. So this is the newer version. So they're going to be the same. There is a shade difference between the different between them, but shade differences are going to happen they both have blue window blue tinted window they both have the push bar on the front which looks pretty good they both have the updated uh spare tire cover in the back again just going to have a little bit of quality of you know prints and stuff on there and details and things like that but it does have that upgraded uh, uh spare tire in the back so the smaller one they did you know kind of shrink it up and make it a little bit rounder so Unfortunately, between the two, there is nothing different except for just a little teeny, teeny bit of a shade color. So we'll put our new one out here. There we go. Put the existing one away. We do have more G-Wagon action, though, because we got the silver one. Uh, this is the muddy version, uh, the battle damage muddy version, uh, which we have seen before. This guy right here. This one dated uh, L27. So this is the battle damage version. So this is the um, old version of the spare tire cover. And we'll showcase those together here. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by what was updated on the spare tire for this particular casting. If we can get it out of the blister. All right. So the existing guy is on the top. The new one's on the bottom. Uh, there is definitely differences in the blues for the shield for sure. Um, that is the most dramatic and then, of course, you know, colors for the brown mud. It's just going to happen. Uh, taking a look at the front here, you'll see that the um, original one has a gloss black uh, push guard on the front. And then the new one has a matte black one. So very significantly different between the two of those. And then here is the deets. You'll see that the one on the right is the old version of the spare tire cover. And the one on the left is your new version. So it did have that bar that went across. And, of course, just a much chunkier bigger uh spare tire which has been toned down and refined so that looks pretty good the casting itself was not modified but the spare tire was so every time we get a new uh you know or reissue i should say of the g-wagon um it will in fact be different so take a look at the base deets you'll see that the interiors are gloss black versus matte black so definitely huge significant change between the two of those so I'm definitely happy with that. So that's very, very good. Um, and then just for completion purposes, he did come in a clean version as well, which is right here. Again, with the old spare tire on there. So that one looks pretty good as well. Do like that one with the non-muddy cleanness. All right. This casting was brand spanking new uh, previously. This is actually a licensed vehicle. This is a 2010 Textron Tiger. Uh, it's basically like a battle military vehicle or maybe even private security. Uh, we have seen that guy before. That guy is right here with his engine techo on there. Uh, just a little bit for the side marker lights and a little bit of print on the side. Uh, nothing doing that much. Just some, um, you know, print for handlebars and whatnot. Same on the other side. Uh, no print on the top. No print on the back. No print on the front. Although you can't see most of the front. Base deets. There you go. This one dated uh, K50. So this was the original release. 
which is the one we're looking at now. So we'll crack him open, pull him out of the blister. There we go. Put the original one on the top. So taking a look at the deets on the side. Again, they just have the same prints. You're going to have orange differences for the corner light. It's just the way it is. Um, but they have a faithful representation of the color. Looks pretty good. I can tell you off the camera, the new one on the bottom looks a little bit brighter with the color. Um, doesn't really show up that much on the camera, but it does look brighter. And then there is the deets from the back. Again, the uh, existing one. Let's see here. Yep, new one is on the bottom, right? Get the day codes mixed up. Let's see, even, see, even see the day codes. Flip that around. Apologize. Just trying to make sure I get this correct. So, yep, that one is this one's the original. So, sorry about that. So, the original will be on the top. No base change differences. Um, both made in Thailand, all that good stuff like that. So, it is what it is. We can't always get new ones. They are the same color window, and that's also not a good thing. So, bummer, bummer. So, we'll put him out there. Put the other new guy to the side. And then, of course, just for completion purposes, did come in a dirty battle damage version, which definitely looked a lot better. Gave it a little bit more character. Not a lot more character, but enough. Enough. Looked, it looked okay. It was something different. Um, they also made a, if I remember correctly, there was either a black or a tan. One of these two uh, floating around somewhere. All right, moving on to another model. We only have a handful left. This is the uh, Mercedes-Benz Unimog. U5023, this has only ever been in Jurassic World. However, it did finally show up in the Best of Germany mix uh, for 2022. So we're going to definitely see that casting outside of the Jurassic World. This is the debut version of this. Looks really, really good. This is the base Deeds outdated L14. Looks really, really good as a Unimog. I do like it. It's a little bit small, but that's just the way it works does have a top that comes off. There's some seats in the back, a little bit of tools and stuff like that, which is very, very nice. So it pops on there. Looks good. So we'll crack open our new Unimog. So we'll crack this guy. Hopefully, there we go. Blisters are relatively good these days. So there's our new Unimog. Still has the print on the front, just like we saw previously. Still has the removable back section. Looks pretty good. The original one will be on the top. They do both have blue windows. The canopy colors are exact. Take a look at the side deets. Same wheels, same color for the wheels. Same details. This one's like exact, 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 unfortunately. Same old, same old. No changes to the base, I don't believe. Nope, no changes to the base. So, unfortunately, that one is an exact carbon copy, uh, even down to the silver print on the Mercedes-Benz logo in the front. Um, you might find some shade variations on these, potentially, but um, it's not going to be all that much, to be honest with you. So, we'll throw him down there. All right, one more Comparo, and then we're on to three brand spanking new versions. This is the 4x4 Scrambulance. Uh, always been a very, very weird casting um, I thought it was kind of interesting, kind of an off-road Unimog-style ambulance uh, is essentially what it was. This was the debut version. This is H17, so many, 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 many years ago. This is the brand spanking new one. Pull this guy up. It is a plastic body and metal base. R25 is the Deets. So right off the bat, you'll see that the new one does have blue chrome painted wheels Rather than dull, uh, almost kind of a purple color, blue for the hubs on the old one. And, of course, uh, much, much crisper and brighter uh, chevrons on the side there. Definitely a little bit smaller print on the chevrons as well on the new one on the bottom. Um, and then, of course, the gray is a little bit darker, just a little bit darker, um, but not too much. No difference really in the backs. Can't really see any differences there. Of course, just the wheels again. The chevrons, again, significantly different between the two. Um, the Jurassic World logo seems to be a little tiny bit bigger on the new one, which is on the left. Uh, but this is basically the mobile uh, veterinarian unit. So that's pretty cool. So we'll take that one. Definitely like to get some difference. There's not a lot, but there's some. All right, brand spanking new version. We have not seen this. this is a brand spanking new deco. 
This is the 2015 Chevy Silverado. Uh, super muddy, battle damage version, I think. So this probably has a spot in the movie. I uh, I don't I don't watch. I haven't watched since like the second Jurassic Park or World or Park, whichever one. So uh, I haven't been up to date on the video. So not sure if this one is in there or not. Uh, this guy does have an interior, uh, just so you know. Just has super, super black windows. Uh, prints on the side look really, really good, though. Just a, looks like Triceratops on the side or some type of dinosaur on the side. Uh, looks looks pretty good, though. This guy is 100% decoed up. Just a silver on the back. Tail lights done up, looks super, super good. And of course, full deco in the front as well. That looks even better. Even splattered up on the windshield or on the uh, headlights and stuff like that. That looks really, really good. Definitely some primo, primo print there. Um, very, very exciting. No print on the top, but that's perfectly fine. Base Deets. There you go, R25. That one is a doozy. That one's very, very good. Very, very good. All right, brand new deco as well for this one. Uh, not seen before. This is the Ford panel van, the Econoline van. Uh, this is the one that I had the hardest time to find um, out of all of these. I ended up just buying cases because I could not find this van to save my life. Ended up needing a few more models than just the van, but that was, that was okay. Uh, so this one uh, looks like it might have some blood splatter on the side. Uh, maybe they ran over a dinosaur. They ran over something. Splattered up some blood on there. That looks interesting. Does have some kind of dirt and stuff cooked up other than that. Disc cup wheels in brown. Very weird uh, contrast, but I think that's okay. Uh, this is the version with the light bar. There is no interior on this model at all. Uh, the you know interior window here is solid black. There is the deets there. It's been modified a couple of times. 1999 was the original debut. Did come with a roof rack. Um, and then they added the light bar later. So that was always a cool casting. I, I did like the Econo line. I thought it was cool. All right, then the very, very last model. Yes, it's been an extremely long trip. This is a brand spanking new casting. This is a 2018 Jeep Wrangler two-door hardtop. Uh, brand spanking new casting. This is where it has debuted. Um, I guarantee you this casting will uh, make its way into the main line in five packs. Um, I can assure you. So... That's just cool, though. It looks super, super good. Nice and wide stance. It says Biosyn on the side. Of course, that is the uh, you know firm that is working with the dinosaurs and doing all that stuff like that. Uh, just get one simple side pass because the entire top is painted black. So the whole casting top is, is metal. This is not a separate piece. Um, it is just painted black. So that's why we don't get the taillights done up. And then, of course, that does have the new Matchbox off-road tire or no newer off-road wheel, which seems to be on a lot of Jeeps. So that one looks pretty good. So take a look at the base deets. Uh, this is man number 1278. So brand spanking new man number. So that one is pretty cool. As a matter of fact, what I want to do is I want to move the Unimog, maybe use move the van a little bit. Uh, kind of put this guy front center since he's a brand spanking new deco. So there you go. That is the entire rundown of the Jurassic World slash park ensemble um i kind of consider it the ultimate maybe it's not the ultimate but i do i did cover everything i did cover everything that we have and um you know i i wouldn't be surprised if we see more in the future but i do want to see some of these models make it to the main line in some other form um, other than the decos you see here so uh, appreciate it guys thanks you very much for sticking with the ridiculously long videos um, as always appreciate it one of you guys don't forget to subscribe uh, we're going to catch you next time. Level M. Peace.